Welcome back. We've talked about NumPy now, so let's move on to Pandas, a well-designed package for storing, managing, and manipulating data in Python. We start this section by discussing what Pandas is and why people use it. Next, we discuss the two most important objects provided by Pandas, the series and the data frame. We discuss how indexing with these objects works so you can get the information you need easily. We follow up by talking about how arithmetic involving series and data frames work and how we can map functions to series. Having covered topics resembling those discussed when we learned about NumPy, we move on to more practical applications of Pandas objects. We discuss how we can and should handle missing data in Pandas objects. We then look at how sorting and ranking is done, how hierarchical indexing works, and finally, wrap up the section with a discussion on how to easily create plots from the data in Pandas data frames. Let's get started. In this video, we'll get a brief overview of what Pandas is and why it's popular. Pandas introduces two key objects to Python, series and data frames, with the latter arguably being the most useful, but Pandas data frames can be thought of as series bound together. A series is a sequence of data, like a list in basic Python, or a 1D NumPy array. And like the NumPy array, a series has a single data type. But indexing with a series is different. With NumPy, there is not much control over row and column indices. But with a series, each element in the series must have a unique index name key, however you want to think about it. The index could consist of strings, like cities in a nation, with the corresponding elements of the series, denoting some statistical value like the city's population. Or dates, like trading days for a stock series. A data frame can be thought of as multiple series of common length with a common index bound together in a single tabular object. This object resembles a NumPy 2D and D array, but it is not the same thing. Not all columns need to be of the same data type. Going back to the city's example, we could have a column containing population and another, the state or province in which the city is located, and another column containing Boolean values identifying whether the city is a state or province capital, a tricky feat to pull off with just NumPy. Each of these columns likely has a unique name, a string, identifying the information they contain perhaps thought of as a variable. With this object, we can store, access, and manipulate our data easily and efficiently. In this notebook, we're going to see a preview of what we can do with series and data frames. We're going to load in both NumPy and Pandas, and we are going to look at reading a CSV file in both NumPy and Pandas. We can, in fact, load in CSV files in NumPy, and they can have different types of data, but in order to manage such files, you need to create a custom dtype that would resemble such data. So here I have a CSV file, iris.csv, that contains the iris data set that I mentioned in the last section. Now, if we wish to load this in, we need to account for the fact that Every row has data that isn't necessarily of the same type. In particular, the last column is for species, and this is not numeric, but instead a string. So we need to create a custom dtype, which I do here, calling this new dtype schema. And I can load in this data set with the NumPy function loadtxt, giving the dtype as this schema object and setting the delimiter to comma to indicate it is a CSV file. We can, in fact, read this data set in, and this is what we see. Notice that this data set must be in your working directory. If we were to look at this data set, this is what we would see. Every row of this data set is a new entry in this one-dimensional NumPy array. This is, in fact, a NumPy array, and we can select the first five rows. We can select 
the first five rows and specify that we want to work with just sepal lengths, which are the first elements in each row. And we can even select petal length and species. But there is a better way to do this with pandas. In pandas, what we will do is use the read CSV function, which will automatically parse the CSV file correctly. We can look at this data set, and notice that with Jupyter Notebooks, it's presented much more readably. This is, in fact, a pandas data frame. We can see the first five rows using the head function. We can see the sepal length by specifying it as if it were an attribute of this data frame. And what we get is actually a series. We can select a subset of this data frame, going again with the first five rows and selecting the columns petal length and species. With that said, pandas at its core is built on top of NumPy. In fact, we can see the NumPy object that pandas is using to describe its contents. And in fact, that NumPy object we created earlier can be used to construct a pandas data frame. 